Be warned, this video is supposed to be simple and fun, but I get kind of aggressive at the end of it, so just be warned about that, and thank you so much for watching. Please enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's been three weeks since I last made a video, and with the most recent news on Skyrim Anniversary Edition, the new version of Skyrim that will be coming out in like a week, I wanted to make a video on stuff I really feel should have been added, fixed, or even just done to actually celebrate the success that is Skyrim on its 10th anniversary. This list is basically just what I feel Anniversary Edition should have done or had to make this version feel more valid rather than just some new creations from the Creation Club. In other words, it's just me nitpicking. Let's get started, shall we? Number 5. More Varied Radiant AI Quests Slash Events Okay, so you know how Skyrim has a lot of those Radiant Quests? You know, the quests that send you to random places to kill or loot or just do random things. Yeah, those quests. I feel like at this point they really have fallen out of the interest of most people. And I feel like there could be more interesting quest options thrown into the pot to make things more interesting. Like, maybe adding in new quest givers or maybe ones with varying rewards. Maybe you could save a pet or someone's child or wife or maybe a precious treasure or weapon. Maybe you could go recruit guards or deliver mail like a courier, I don't know, just new random quests. Having more variety would make these things more interesting in my opinion, and considering the 10 years Bethesda has had to make the adjustments to the game that they can, this and maybe even more random encounters like those bandits that try to rob you, or the farmers and soldiers you encounter on the road, or the Dark Brotherhood agents sent to kill you, would just definitely liven up a returning player's experience. It's just an idea. Number 4. Improved the Alduin boss fight. So this is something I personally felt Skyrim has needed for a while. I know there's a mod to fix this very problem, but there's a mod for everything at this point, and Bethesda should have done something by now. So yeah, I, I believe one of the most universal complaints about the main quest of Skyrim is that the final climactic battle between you and Alduin is disappointing. The game hypes up Alduin to be this unyielding force of change that is akin to a god, and yet you fight and kill him like literally every other dragon you encounter. Twice. I know during the final fight he summons down meteors and such in Sovngarde, but the actual fight is identical to literally every dragon you've ever fought before in the game, and if you want to be a strong dragonborn, that's a lot of dragons. All I'm saying is to add maybe a stage or two to the fight, maybe with some more unique shouts, and maybe a moment where you chase Alduin through Sovngarde to a final arena not far from the Mead Hall. Heck, maybe he could just be devouring up souls throughout the fight to gain health. Maybe a couple more lost souls tried to help you, but Alduin just eats them to heal. I don't, I don't know, literally anything at this point. I understand that the development for Skyrim was partially rushed, especially towards the end of development, but given the game's success, these kinds of improvements could have been implemented during the 10 years between its initial release and the 11th of November in 2021. This here isn't the only nitpick I have with the story content needing tweaks, so let's discuss my next point too while we're at it. Number 3. Improve the College of Winterhold questline. The College of Winterhold has to be one of the most interesting concepts I've seen come out of Skyrim. Any mage or slightly magically inclined player will most likely be told of the college throughout their journey, and eventually make their way to it with the idea of doing its questline. Too bad it has to be one of the worst cases of a rush story within the game itself. For those of you who don't know, there was a rumor that the college quest was supposed to be a lot longer and way more interesting. There is no evidence to support this, but most people believe that the college quest was supposed to end with you using the Eye of Magnus to pull off some timey-wimey mumbo-jumbo that would explain how the city of Winterhold was initially destroyed in the first place. In other words, we would have been responsible or at least able to witness the Great Collapse, which would have been really cool. After this, the Sigic Order would have gotten involved and aided us in stopping the Collapse so that it never happened, restoring the city of Winterhold to its former glory. Again, this would have been amazing, but it never happened, either because the writers did not have enough development time or because they never came up with the concept to begin with. Like I said, there's no evidence to support this theory, so as far as we know, it's just a super popular theory. But regardless, this theory has been in speculation for years, meaning someone at Bethesda must have heard it by now and deduced that people really weren't happy with the questline. Maybe they could have at least reworked it in some capacity, maybe adding in another quest to pad it out or add context. 
Like, maybe adding in more actual classes at the beginning, like with Tolfdir, but instead with other teachers on other subjects. Maybe adding the ability to help fix Winterhold itself, uh, maybe even giving the option to turn down being the Archmage since people were complaining that you becoming it made no sense. All of these would have been acceptable options, and something along these lines was possible given how much time there was to work on these remasters, which at this point are just feeling more like ports rather than reworks of games. But again, this is just me venting about my personal grievances. Let's discuss a more sore topic. The Blades. Number 2. Fix the Blades as a Faction Be warned, this is definitely the longest section I have so far. I don't believe there's been a more disappointing fall from grace in the Elder Scrolls series like the one we've seen with the Blades. Okay, maybe the one with Mana Marco, but, but still. They went from being this covert and powerful faction that, that was essentially the hand of the Emperor to a nearly extinct petty group of dragon hunters. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy the concept of the Blades assisting the Dragonborn in hunting down dragons. That is cool. In fact, I believe given the circumstances that was a good role for them, but the way they act and are portrayed in Skyrim is disappointing and extremely frustrating. Most of my complaints about this faction have to be about how they treat your character throughout the game and how small and insignificant they actually are to the point you can almost ignore them after a certain point in the main story. I believe one of my biggest grievances with the Blades is the actions of one of the two characters that is supposed to represent them, Delphine. I absolutely hate how she treats the Dragonborn throughout the main story, from stealing the horn of Jorgen Windcaller and dragging you away from the trial you were set on, to downing you non-stop till she literally sees you kill a dragon, when shouting in front of her would have probably silenced half those doubts right away, to the audacity she has to command you to do something or she'll kick you out of the blades. He's absolutely the worst blade I have ever seen in any of the Elder Scrolls games, and I know that is a heavy thing to say, but I am sure, absolutely positive, I am not the only one who absolutely hates how she acts in Skyrim. Oh my god, I'm getting really angry here. <laughs> I think adjusting how Delphine acts could fix half my problems with the blades. For example, instead of stealing the horn, perhaps a note could have just been simply left alongside the horn so that you didn't have to be dragged to her to get the Greybeard's approval. Maybe she could have had you shout in front of her so she could have partially trusted you from the start. And maybe instead of kicking you out of the blades, she just left the blades. Or better yet, you could use your position as Dragonborn to remind her you're in charge. Like, I don't understand why Bethesda felt Delphine should have held more power than the Dragonborn when it came to a faction dedicated to serving the Dragonborn. It, it just baffles me. Like, how did they come up with that concept? Who, who thought that was a good idea? Todd? I'm looking at you, Todd. And Delphine is not the only problem with this faction. I really feel that besides being able to hunt dragons, the faction loses any sense of importance after the peace treaty in the game. And this is probably because Bethesda didn't want them involved because they felt a lot of people might not want to kill Parthenax. And because Delphine is given so much power writing-wise, she literally won't help you after this point. So, my solutions. Scrap the whole Delphine makes the blades not help you thing, and instead, make it so the Dragonborn has final say. Then after that, you can continue to build up the blades, and even have them show up to help you capture the dragon at Dragon's Reach. Then, after you return from slaying Alduin and return to Skyhaven, have the blades all kneeling to you in return to add some more congratulations to beating the main questline, because there's not enough of that in the game either. These are very simple ideas that could have been implemented and I don't want to hear Bethesda doesn't have any clue that people don't like Delphine or the Blades when the Parthenax Dilemma is literally one of the most downloaded mods on Nexus with over 1.5 million downloads on the special edition alone. And that mod literally has you yelling at the Blades saying you're in charge. 10 years and we can't even get the option to set the Blades straight. So yeah, that's that point, but before I move on to the number one thing, I had more ideas that didn't quite make the list, and I need to cool down. So I'm going to put them here, and we're going to talk about them very briefly. Honorable Mentions Improved Dragon Riding Dragon Riding in the Dragonborn DLC kind of sucks, but Bethesda definitely could have improved this with the two re-releases on better hardware. All I'm saying. Bundled in both Oblivion and Morrowind ports to the next gen. 
This would have added more value to the Anniversary Edition, as well as exposed more people to Oblivion and Morrowind. I don't really think I need to say more. We also need a port of Oblivion to the next-gen Sony systems, because I want to play it again on those. More books, clothes, food, etc. That is not from the Creation Club. Just putting in more clothes and food free with this version in general, and pulling more books from previous games would have added variety to the things that we could have found in the world, making another playthrough years later just that little bit more interesting. Maybe some more recognition slash rewards for beating the main story. Literally, just some random guards or kids going, By sure, it's the Dragonborn, or Oh my gosh, it's the Dragonborn, you're a hero, or literally any other lines would have made the whole main quest feel more satisfying to complete. Like, side tangent, in Oblivion, you get recognized by almost every NPC that you encounter. It's like, it's the hero of Kafach, it's the champion of Cyrodiil, you saved everybody, and nobody in Skyrim acknowledges that you literally saved the world. That's it, and it's a joke at this point. So, yeah, minor thing. And finally, my number one thing they could have done to make Skyrim Anniversary Edition actually worth making and made waves in the community that is the Skyrim community. Number one, releasing a real, official, new DLC to celebrate the 10 year anniversary. Yep. I said it, and the more I thought about it, the more I'm disappointed that this didn't happen. Bethesda has literally an entire community worth of modders that know their creation kit, that can code and modify their game, and instead of gathering a bunch of people together and contracting them alongside some of their in-house writers and developers to make something big, something beautiful, something that would actually commemorate Skyrim's 10th anniversary, commemorate their biggest success of all time, just make something that actually had a heart in it. We instead got the same modders and developers making fishing mini games. How hard would it have been to make a DLC? I mean, I know it would take time, but they've had time. They have the resources to do it, and quite easily too. Maybe they could have made a DLC that centered around going to a portion of Morrowind or Cyrodiil, or, or maybe even a territory we've never been to before. Maybe we'd go to another plane of oblivion, or maybe we'd get something that hints at the next Elder Scrolls game. Maybe we could hunt down a dragon that was resurrected in Hammerfell. Maybe we'd explore a small portion of High Rock that's unhappy with the Thalmor. Maybe we get to fight a group of Forsworn that want to organize together and take over Markarth due to the disorganization of the Legion. There are a good number of ideas they could have gone with, but instead we get to do more Creation Club quests where we read notes and follow the marker on our screen. Really fun. And it's sad because at this point the Skyrim community cares more about the game than the creator does. Bethesda has had many opportunities to fix the issues Skyrim has over these 10 years, yet the people making changes are people like you and me, the modders. And not everyone has access to those fixes and changes by the modders. The console version doesn't support every mod out there, especially the more interesting or complex ones. And I know I sound like a neckbeard who just wants to complain, but honestly, I feel like I'm not the only one who wants more from Bethesda at this point. I'm sure everyone here can agree these kinds of changes and additions would have gotten Bethesda more brownie points with the community and definitely have gotten more people interested in the Anniversary Edition, which would have been more money in their pocket. I wanted to make this video as a fun and interesting discussion on what I feel should have been added to Skyrim for its 10th anniversary. And instead, I ended up writing a video on the idea that Bethesda has had time to make a worthwhile version of Skyrim that could have been everything they envisioned it could be, but instead would rather just change some graphics or add in dwarven mud crabs and fishing rather than fix and perfect the game that's making them so much money. And I guess they're not inclined to do anything, but wouldn't it be really something if they did? Like. They have the time, they want to add in things, they want to change things, they want to make people more interested, but the more they re-release this game, the more people see the holes in it. That sounds like a weird thing to say, but just add in things. Make the changes you want to change, and if you're going to keep making the game relevant today, you gotta do that, because we're tired. We're tired of playing the same game. That's why modding the game has become such a good pastime. So just... Do something already, Bethesda. Do something worthwhile. Stop making people pay $8 for a piece of armor or something. 
So yeah, this video is pretty much over. I just want to say that I hope that you enjoyed this. I know I went off at a couple points, but I, I feel like it's just a frustrating event with the second, or not the second, it was like the third or fourth time they released Skyrim, and we just, they, there's things that could be fixed or added. I don't know. If you have any suggestions on what the heck they should do, definitely let me know in the comment section. I There were so many ideas I had when I was making this, and I just I couldn't put them all down. Uh, some of them were more important, some of them just seemed petty, so I didn't put them in. And uh, if you have something, or any ideas, or maybe you just want to vent in your frustrations too, go put it in the comment section. I love discussing this kind of stuff with people. Um, it's been kind of hard to make videos lately. I'm just going to sit down and write and record and edit things more often so I can get out more cool videos like this. Um, it's actually been almost four weeks, so it's been a full month since I've released a video, and mostly because I've been busy, work, uh, COVID hit me, and I'm still recovering from this little cough thing that's bothering me every now and then. It's getting a lot better, but eh. I'm just ranting at this point. Thank you so much for watching if you have up to this point. I really, really am thankful for you guys watching these. And I hope you guys have a nice day, night, or evening, wherever and whenever you're at. And I hope your day is safe and you have an awesome day, like I said. So, take it easy, friends. Thank you.